Section 28 of Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 9. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dion Gines, Salt Lake City, Utah. Library of the World's Best Literature, Ancient and Modern, Volume 9. Section 28. Selected Works by Matthias Claudius. 1740-1815 Matthias Claudius, best known as the Wandsbecker Boat, the messenger from Wandsbeck, was born at Rhinefield in Holstein, August 15, 1740. He was of excellent stock, coming from a long line of clergymen. It was said that scarcely another family in Schleswig-Holstein had given to the church so many sons. There is but little to record of the quiet boyhood passed in the picturesque stillness of the North German village. At the outset, the education of Claudius was conducted by his father, the village pastor. From beginning to end, his life was simple, moderate, and well-ordered. After finishing his school days at Plowen, he entered the University of Jena, 1759, with the intention of studying theology in order to follow the traditions of the family and enter the ministry. This idea he was soon obliged to relinquish on account of a pulmonary weakness, and he turned instead to the study of jurisprudence. His strongest attraction was towards literature. He became a member of the Literary Guild in Jena, and later, when he had attained fame as the Wandsbecker Boat, he was intimately associated with Voss, F. L. Stolberg, Herder, and others of the Göttingen fraternity. His first verses, published in Jena in 1763, under the title Tandeleien und Erzelungen, Trifles and Tales, gave no indication of his talents, and were no more than the usual student efforts of unconscious imitation. They have absolutely no poetic value, and are interesting only as they indicate a stage of development. In editing his works in later years, Claudius preserved of this early poetry only one song, an ein quella, to a spring. After leaving the university in 1764, he took a position as private secretary to Count Holstein in Copenhagen, and here, under the powerful influence of Klopstock, whose friendship was at this time the most potent element of his life, and in the brilliant circle which that poet had drawn around him, Claudius entered fully into the life of sentiment and ideas which conduced so largely to his intellectual development. Some years later, after a fallow period spent in the quiet of his father's house at Rheinfeld, he settled at Wandsbeck near Altona, 1771, where in connection with Bode he published The Wandsbecker Boat, the popular weekly periodical so indissolubly associated with his name. His contributions, under the name of Asmus, found everywhere the warmest acceptance. In 1775, through Herder's recommendation, Claudius was appointed chief land commissioner at Darmstadt, but circumstances rendering the position uncongenial, he returned to his beloved Wandsbeck, where he supported his family by his pen until 1788, when Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark appointed him reviser of the Holstein Bank at Altona. He died in Hamburg January 1, 1815, in the house of his son-in-law, the bookseller Perthes. A collection of his works, with the title Asmus Omnia Sua Sacum Portens, 
oder samtlich work des wandsbecker boten the collected works of the wandsbeck messenger appeared at hamburg seventeen seventy five to eighteen twelve these collected works comprise songs romances fables poems letters etc originally published in various places the translation of st martin and fenelon marked the pietistic spirit of his later years and is in strong contrast to the exuberance which produced the rheinweinlied rhine song and urian's reis um die welt urian's journey around the world claudius as a poet won the hearts of his countrymen his verses express his idyllic love of nature and his sympathy with rustic life the poet and the man are one his pure and simple style appealed to the popular taste and some of his lyrics have become genuine folk songs speculations on new year's day from the wandsbecker boat a happy new year a happy new year to my dear country the land of old integrity and truth a happy new year to friends and enemies christians and turks hottentots and cannibals to all on whom god permits his sun to rise and his rain to fall also to the poor negro slaves who have to work all day in the hot sun it's wholly a glorious day the new year's day at other times i can bear that a man should be a little bit patriotic and not make court to other nations true one must not speak evil of any nation the wiser part are everywhere silent and who would revile a whole nation for the sake of the loud ones as i said i can bear at other times that a man should be a little patriotic but on new year's day my patriotism is dead as a mouse and it seems to me on that day as if we were all brothers and had one father who is in heaven as if all the goods of the world were water which god has created for all men as i once heard it said and so i am accustomed every new year's morning to sit down on a stone by the wayside to scratch with my staff in the sand before me and to think of this and of that not of my readers i hold them in all honour but on new year's morning on the stone by the wayside i think not of them but i sit there and think that during the past year i saw the sun rise so often and the moon that i saw so many rainbows and flowers and breathed the air so often and drank from the brook and then i do not like to look up and i take with both hands my cap from my head and look into that then i think also of my acquaintances who have died during the year and how they can talk now with socrates and numa and other men of whom i have heard so much good and with john huss and then it seems as if graves opened round me and shadows with bald crowns and long grey beards came out of them and shook the dust out of their beards that must be the work of the everlasting huntsman who has his doings about the twelfth the old pious long beards would fain sleep but a glad new year to your memory and to the ashes in your graves rhine wine with laurel wreath the glasses vintage mellow and drink it gaily dry through farthest europe know my worthy fellow for such in vain ye'll try nor hungary nor poland ever could boast it and as for gallia's vine saint viet the ritter if he choose may toast it we germans love the rhine our fatherland we thank for such a blessing and many more beside and many more though little show possessing well worth our love and pride 
not everywhere the vine bedecks our border as well the mountains show that harbour in their bosoms foul disorder not worth their room below thuringia's hills for instance are aspiring to wear a juice like wine but that is all nor mirth nor song inspiring it breathes not of the vine and other hills with buried treasures glowing for wine are far too cold though iron ores and cobalt there are growing and chants some paltry gold the rhine the rhine there grow the gay plantations o oh, hallowed be the rhine upon his banks are brewed the rich potations of this consoling wine drink to the rhine and every coming morrow be mirth and music thine and when we meet a child of care and sorrow we'll send him to the rhine winter a song to be sung behind the stove old winter is the man for me stout-hearted sound and steady steel nerves and bones of brass hath he come snow come blow he's ready if ever man was well tis he he keeps no fire in his chamber and yet from cold and cough is free in bitterest december he dresses him outdoors at morn nor needs he first to warm him toothache and rheumatis he'll scorn and colic don't alarm him in summer when the woodland rings he asks what mean these noises warm sounds he hates and all warm things most heartily despises but when the fox's bark is loud when the bright hearth is snapping when children round the chimney crowd all shivering and clapping when stone and bone with frost do break and pond and lake are cracking then you may see his old side shake such glee his frame is racking near the north pole upon the strand he has an icy tower likewise in lovely switzerland he keeps a summer bower so up and down now here now there his regiments manoeuvre when he goes by we stand and stare and cannot choose but shiver night song the moon is up in splendour and golden stars attend her the heavens are calm and bright trees cast a deepening shadow and slowly off the meadow a mist is rising silver white night's curtains now closing round half a world reposing in calm and holy trust all seems one vast still chamber where weary hearts remember no more the sorrows of the dust translations of charles t brooks end of section twenty eight